is a package manager that uses charts to deploy and manage applications on Kubernetes. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use Helm to deploy HCL DX portal. Using Helm to deploy DX was first introduced in CF196 for GKE. With CF197, support for Red Hat OpenShift, EKS, and AKS were added. For this demo, I'm going to be using my OpenShift test environment. Now previously when using DXETL to deploy DX, the operator would recognize the difference between OpenShift and other Kubernetes platforms. With Helm-based DX deployment, however, there is no longer an operator or operators if you include the Digital Asset Manager operator. So the steps for deploying DX on OpenShift and all the other Kubernetes platforms are almost exactly the same. We'll all have to do something different for OpenShift because of permissions, but more on that later. So the first thing we need to do is install Helm. You will need to do this on whatever workstation or OS you will be using. For this demo, I'll be using Mac, as you can see. So before we can use Helm, we need to make sure we have a Kubernetes cluster and that the workstation is configured to access the cluster. For my workstation, I have the kubectl and OC binary files already in place as well as a kubeconfig file to access my cluster. And I can verify by simply running the version option for each. To install Helm on Mac, I'm going to download the binaries and place them in my user local bin directory. Again, I can test using the version option, but this time for the Helm binary. Since this is running on Mac OS, I'll have to allow the application to run in my security settings. And that looks better. With kubectl, OC, and Helm all ready to go, we need the portal images and charts. Now there's a video on how to access and download the portal software already. Please see the video in the description below if you need it. For this demo, I'm going to use CF198, which I already have here locally. So here's the zip that you can get from the HCL software portal, and this is it extracted. As you can see, all the images for the deployment are within the zip. You will have to upload all of these images to your private registry and know that each image name and tag. And there's also another video in the description that has uh, an example on how to do this. However, depending on your Kubernetes platform, the steps might be different. Also within the zip, there's a compressed file beginning with hcl-dx-deployment. This is where the Helm charts are stored. I've copied the, and extracted this file already. Now the only file in concern here is values.yaml. This file, or actually a copy of this file, is the only file you should be modifying. Modifying any of the other files is not supported. As you can see, I have already copied this file and named it custom-values.yaml to distinguish it. So let's jump into the file. If you're familiar with the previous deployment method of using DXCTL, there was a properties file that you entered all your details. You can think of custom-values.yaml as the Helm version of that properties file. In this file, there are multiple sections, which I'll go through each. The first section is for the images. This is where you specify your private re registry, um, the image names and tags. And if your registry requires a pull secret, you can specify it here. The next section is resources. In this section, you can customize the CPU and memory as well as the uh, limits for each of the DX pods. For this demo, I'll leave all the defaults. The scaling section is where you specify how many replicas or pods you want of each DX application. For testing, I usually set these to one. For the core pod, 
Until you have performed a database transfer, there will always be only one pod, even if you specify a higher number here. The node selector section allows you to assign each DX application to a specific Kubernetes node. This is useful if your cluster has nodes with more resources than other nodes. In that case, you would want to assign the core application to those beefier nodes. For this demo, I won't be utilizing this feature. The next section is the volumes. This is where you specify the volume name and the storage class for your persistent volumes. Now for this demo, I'm using the storage class sample provided by the HCLDX product documentation as seen here. So for the storage class name, I'll be using dx-deploy-stg. For the volume names, you can either enter the names of existing persistent volumes that you want to use, or you can leave them blank and the volumes will be self-provisioned on your cluster. In my scenario, I have created and provided the names of the WP profile, the digital asset manager, and the remote search server volumes. And in my OpenShift web console, you can see the volumes have been created and are available. And also in this section, you can set the size for each of the volume. In this case, I'm just using the defaults. The next section is the application section. This is where you enable or disable each DX application to deploy. In my case, I'm deploying all the applications except for the open LDAP. Do note, some applications do require others. For example, the Digital Asset Manager and Content Composer do rely on the Ring API. So if you choose to deploy either one of these, the Ring API will be automatically deployed even if you set it to false here. The next section is networking. If you know the host name that will be assigned to the ambassador load balancer, you can enter it here. If you don't know it at this time, leave it blank and you can update it later, which is what I'm going to do. You can also use these settings if you want to remove or modify the portal context route. I'm leaving the defaults for this demo. If you're deploying extra features like Digital Asset Manager or Content Composer, you also need to set the core's origin here. Since I don't know the host name, I'm leaving it blank for now. We also need to specify the secret for the Ambassador TLS certificate. Now I haven't created this yet, but I'm going to use the default name. The host imports and SSL under this add-on section is for hybrid deployments, so I'm not touching those. The security section is where you specify the username and passwords for the various applications if you have changed them. In this case, this is a new deployment, so all the username and passwords will be the default. The probe section allows you to customize the probe configurations for each DX application. If you aren't too familiar with Kubernetes probes and would like to know more, I included a link to in the description to another video where I discuss the DX probes. As of CF198, the metric section is not being used, so we can ignore this section until this feature is fully released in a later CF. In the configuration section, you can add an external LDAP, which I won't be doing at this time. As of CF198, we can ignore the license settings. In the tuning part, we can configure if this environment will be authoring or rendering, and if we want to expose the configuration wizard. The LTPA and Open LDAP settings I'll leave as default. The final option in the section is if we want to expose a remote search server WAS admin console, which I will. As of CF198, the migration settings can be ignored. This setting will be used in a future CF where you need to migrate an operator based deployment to Helm based. With my images in my prior registry, my persistent volumes created, and my custom-values.yaml file ready, I'm now ready to start my deployment. The first thing we need is a namespace. Now, since I'm deploying on OpenShift, I need to create my namespace with special permissions. In the HCL product documentation, you'll find some sample YAML you can use to create the namespace, which I've copied here, and I've created the YAML file already. So to create my namespace, I'll run OC apply with the F flag and point to my YAML file. And my namespace is created. 
Now, if you're on a non-OpenShift platform, you would simply need to just create your namespace using kubectl create ns with the name you want to use, like this. With the namespace created, you can now create the secret with the ambassador TLS certificate. Now, since this is a test environment, I used OpenSSL to create my cert. So I'll use ocsecreatesecret command to create the secret, but first I'll make sure I'm using the correct project or namespace. And the secret was created successfully. As you can see, my cert files are within the same directory. Now, if you're on a non-OpenShift platform, you would use the kubectl create secret command instead of the OC. With that done, we're ready to create the deployment using helm install command. I'm using helm install, and I'm pointing to the namespace which I just created with the n flag. I'm pointing to my custom-values.yaml file with the f flag. I'm giving dx-helm as the name of my helm deployment. And then I'm passing in the compressed file containing the DX charts. With that done, I can use the OpenShift web console to view my deployment. So here's my namespace, dx-helm. As we can see, the pods are being created. The core pod will take some time because first the image needs to be downloaded from the registry, then it will need to create and initialize the WP profile directory. If you're on a non-OpenShift platform, you can use the web console that's available to you, or you can use kubectl get pods with a namespace. If you want to monitor the progress, you can check the core logs, either through the web console or using kubectl logs command. Once all the pods are in a running ready state, I need to go back and update my hostname. Using OC get service or kubectl get service, I see the, the external IP assigned to my load balancer here. So I can go to my custom-values.yaml and enter the hostname that um, is corresponds to that uh, assigned IP in the networking section under the core host setting. Now, if you've deployed any other features such as Content Composer or Digital Asset Manager, you also need to configure the core's origin in the, this section. Since I deployed all the applications, I'll update all of these settings. With my custom-values.yaml saved, I can now run the Helm upgrade command using the same options as before to update my deployment. Running the Helm upgrade command will cause all the pods affected by your changes to be recreated, which we can see. Once the pods are all back in a running ready state, we should now be able to access portal. And that looks good. So I'll log in with the default credentials, WPS admin and WPS admin. Now first, we can verify the version and the administration page. And we see 9.5 CF198, so that looks good. Next, we can verify the extra features I chose were deployed and working. Content Composer looks good. Under Sites, we can see Design Studio, which is currently in beta. And that also looks good. And finally, we can confirm Digital Asset Manager. And this looks good as well. This concludes this video on deploying DX with Helm. For more information on this topic, please visit the HCL product documentation, which I've included a link in the video description below.